29,000 years ago, the very first oven was dug into the earth, just a hole in the ground that could transform raw food into something extraordinary. No bricks, no metal, just fire and soil shaping the first meal in history. We often think newer means better, but long before modern stoves and microwaves, ancient cooks mastered physics and chemistry in ways we still struggle to match. With nothing but clay, stone, salt and ash, they controlled heat, moisture and flavor on a level that feels almost magical today. On Stellar Eureka, we're uncovering 10 of these ingenious techniques, methods so advanced that modern science is still catching up. And wait until you see the desert trick that fries food without a drop of oil, the Roman flavor bomb once worth more than perfume, and the method that cooks meat from the inside out with hot blazing stones. These forgotten secrets might just change the way you think about cooking forever. Our journey begins with one of humanity's oldest culinary traditions, cooking in clay. Long before the first metal pan was forged, cultures from China to ancient Rome were harnessing the power of earthware. In China, vessels like the shaguo, or sandy pot, have been essential for creating deep, complex flavors for over 4,000 years. The process seems simple. An unglazed pot is soaked in water, which absorbs like a sponge. When heated, a remarkable transformation begins. The secret is the pot's porosity. Unlike impenetrable metal, clay breathes. As it heats, the absorbed water turns to steam, circulating gently and evenly, creating a humid environment that seals in natural juices. But the pot's genius goes deeper. Clay is naturally alkaline, a property that neutralizes acidity in ingredients like tomatoes, making them taste naturally sweeter. This gentle cooking also preserves nutrients. The pot radiates far infrared heat, a less destructive energy that cooks food without destroying delicate vitamins. Modern cookware is designed to be inert, but a clay pot is an active participant. It absorbs the flavors of meals cooked within it. Leaving behind clay's gentle steam, we turn to a technique powered by the raw, searing energy of embers. The aboriginal ash baking method takes us back to the very dawn of cooking. Archaeologists have found evidence of hearths containing ash and bone fragments dating back an astonishing 300,000 years. For tens of thousands of years, aboriginal Australians have used this primal technique to bake bread, known as damper or ash cakes, from foraged grains. The process requires a deep understanding of fire. A hardwood fire is allowed to burn down completely, leaving a thick bed of white-hot embers and ash that can retain intense heat for hours. Dense vegetables like potatoes or onions or simple dough are placed directly into the embers and then completely buried with a layer of hot ash. This creates a perfect primitive oven. The embers provide intense, dry, radiant heat from below, while the covering of ash acts as a flawless insulator, creating a consistent, all-around cooking environment much like a modern convection oven. The intense heat instantly carbonizes the food's outer layer, forming a hard, protective shell. This crust locks in all the internal moisture, steaming the food from the inside while the exterior roasts, resulting in an incredibly succulent interior with a deep, smoky flavor. But this method reveals an even deeper level of ancient wisdom. Ash is not just a medium for heat. It can be a chemical agent. Hardwood ash is alkaline. For thousands of years, Mesoamerican cultures soaked their corn in a solution of water and wood ash. This process, known as nixtamalization, breaks down the corn's tough outer hull making essential nutrients like vitamin B3 and calcium bioavailable to the human body. Without this chemical step, a diet based on corn alone would lead to severe nutritional deficiencies. This ancient chemistry transformed a simple grain into the foundation of entire civilizations. Other cultures, however, expanded the idea of earth cooking into massive undertakings that could feed entire communities. The earth oven is a technology found in cultures all over the world, a key sign of ancient human settlement. The oldest known example dates back 29,000 years. 
but few have perfected it to the degree of the Maori people of New Zealand. Their version, the Hong Yi, is a sophisticated underground steam engine and a cornerstone of their culture brought to the islands by their Polynesian ancestors more than 700 years ago. Preparing a Hong Yi is a monumental communal effort. A large pit is dug and a massive fire is built to heat volcanic rocks for hours until they glow, reaching temperatures of over 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. The embers are removed and wire baskets filled with food are layered over the scorching stones. The entire pile is then covered with wet sacks and green vegetation before the pit is sealed with earth, trapping everything inside for several hours. The Hong Yi is a masterpiece in thermodynamics, using three forms of heat transfer at once. The hot rocks cook the food through conduction and radiate intense heat upwards. But most importantly, the water from the wet cloths hits the rocks and instantly vaporizes. This creates a massive amount of superheated steam that is trapped by the earthen seal circulating through the pit and cooking the food with incredibly moist, even heat. This long, slow steaming process is perfect for breaking down tough collagen in meat into succulent gelatin, making it melt in the mouth soft. The sheer scale and labor involved in a Hong Yi reveals its true purpose. This is not a technique for a simple family dinner. It is a piece of social technology designed to feed an entire community at once. Unlike the enclosed power of the Hong Yi, the next technique brings fire's energy straight into the cooking vessel itself. How do you boil water before the invention of fireproof pottery? This was a fundamental challenge for our ancestors, and the solution they devised is brilliantly simple. Known as stone boiling, this technique was used across North America for thousands of years, with archaeological evidence dating back at least 4,800 years. It allowed people to cook stews, render nutritious grease from bones, and prepare medicinal teas in containers that would otherwise burn, such as waterproof woven baskets, bark containers, or animal hides. The method is a direct application of thermal physics. Smooth, dense stones like quartzite or basalt are heated in a fire until they are scorching hot. Using forked sticks, the stones are lifted from the embers, quickly rinsed of ash, and dropped into the container of water. The heat energy stored in the rocks is transferred to the water with explosive speed, bringing it to a rolling boil almost instantly. As the stones cool, they are swapped out for fresh hot ones, maintaining the boil for as long as needed. This method offered a far more controlled and gentle heat than cooking over a direct flame. This was perfect for slow simmering stews without scorching them and was especially effective for rendering fat and marrow from crushed bones a process that unlocked crucial calories and nutrients. In fact, many food historians theorize that stone boiling is precisely how the first soups and stews were invented. The ability to simmer liquids for extended periods opened up an entirely new culinary world that roasting over a fire could never achieve. After mastering stones as a source of heat, some cultures discovered a mineral that could form a protective oven in itself. In the ancient Mediterranean, salt was more than just a seasoning, it was a building material for a unique and dramatic cooking method. The earliest known recipe for salt crust baking comes from Archestratus, a Greek poet living in Sicily in the 4th century BCE, and the technique was later perfected by the Romans. Because it required huge amounts of salt, it was often a dish reserved for the wealthy. The process is a piece of culinary theater, a whole fish or a cut of meat is stuffed with aromatics like herbs and citrus. It is then completely encased in a thick crust of coarse salt, often mixed with egg whites or water to form a moldable paste. After baking in a hot oven, the hard salt protective casing is brought to the table and cracked open, releasing a cloud of aromatic steam. The science is counterintuitive, but brilliant. The food does not end up tasting too salty, Instead, the salt crust hardens into a perfect, airtight shell that acts as an insulator, shielding the food from the oven's harsh, direct heat. This creates a miniature oven where the food cooks gently and evenly in its own radiant heat. 
The crust also traps every bit of moisture, effectively steaming the food in its own juices and making it incredibly tender. A thin layer of steam forms between the food's skin and the salt, allowing just enough saline vapor to penetrate and season the food perfectly. This method reimagines salt not just as a seasoning, but as a structural component, achieving a level of insulation and moisture retention that even modern appliances struggle to match. Instead of a hard, mineral-sealed barrier, our next ancient cooking technique relies on a soft, pliable wrapper provided by nature. Long before the invention of plastic wrap or aluminum foil, nature had already provided the perfect food wrapper. In the tropical and subtropical cuisines of Southeast Asia, India, and Latin America, the banana leaf has been used for centuries as a versatile and flavorful cooking tool. Dishes like Indonesian pepes or Cambodian amok tray depend on it. Before use, the leaves are gently warmed over a flame, which makes them pliable and prevents them from tearing. Food is then wrapped tightly inside, creating a sealed packet that can be steamed, grilled, or even fried. The reason is that the leaf's waxy, waterproof coating creates a perfect seal, trapping the food's natural juices and effectively steaming it in its own moisture, a technique modern chefs call en papillote. The leaf also acts as a protective barrier, shielding delicate food from the direct, harsh heat of a grill, preventing charring and allowing for a gentle, even cooking process. But the real magic is in the flavor. As the leaf heats up, it releases its natural oils and aromatic compounds, infusing the food with a subtle, sweet and grassy essence with hints of smoke. Scientific analysis of the leaf's aroma profile reveal notes of cucumber, banana-like esters, and even petrichor, the distinct earthy scent of rain falling on dry soil. The cooking process becomes a form of vapor infusion where the steam carries these complex essential oils into the food, fundamentally changing its flavor. Where banana leaves offer delicacy, mountain cultures turn to something sturdier, a cooking vessel that grew straight from the forest floor. There, nature provided the perfect cooking vessel, often requiring no complex shaping. For centuries, cultures from the proto malay people to the ethnic minorities of China have used fresh bamboo tubes to cook food directly over a fire. The iconic dish la mange, glutinous rice and coconut milk steamed inside a stalk, is a testament to this ingenious method. The process is a model of efficiency. A section of green bamboo is cut, leaving one of the natural nodes intact to form a sealed bottom. Ingredients are poured inside, the opened end is plugged with a banana leaf, and the entire tube is placed over hot coals, rotated periodically for even cooking. The bamboo itself is part of the recipe, a vessel that works in perfect harmony with physics. As the water inside heats to steam, the sealed tube acts as a natural pressure cooker. This raises the boiling point far above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, cooking food faster and more thoroughly. But unlike inert metal, the green bamboo stalk releases its own moisture as it heats, infusing the food and keeping it incredibly succulent. At the same time, the inner lining of the bamboo imparts a subtle, sweet and grassy aroma that simply cannot be replicated, a flavor born from the forest itself. While forests provided bamboo, in the desert the most abundant cooking resource was not a plant at all, but the ground beneath one's feet. How do you cook in a place where cooking oil is a precious luxury? In the deserts of North Africa and across the villages and cities of Asia, the answer is as abundant as the ground itself. Sand For centuries, Bedouin nomads have used hot sand as a cheap, effective, and completely oil-free cooking method for everything from bread to entire meals. A fire is built in a pit, then allowed to burn down. A pot of stew, or even just dough for flatbread, is buried directly in the hot sand and embers, then covered completely. This technique works because sand is an excellent medium for heat transfer. Each tiny grain becomes a point of contact, delivering intense, dry heat evenly across the entire surface of the food through conduction. 
This creates a perfect, uniform cooking environment with no hot spots, allowing tough meats to become fall apart tender and stews to develop incredible depth. A large volume of sand has a high thermal mass, meaning it holds a stable temperature for hours, preventing the scorching that can easily happen in a metal pan. The next method takes things one step further, cooking food directly on blazing slabs of stone. The tradition of grilling meat is ancient, with one of the earliest forms of Korean barbecue, known as mekjok, dating back nearly 2,000 years to the Goguryeo era. While modern Korean barbecue often uses metal grates, the original principle involved cooking meat over a fire, and one variation of this ancient practice is grilling on superheated stone slabs. This method, sometimes called dolguyi, is a masterclass in heat management using a natural material to achieve a perfect sear. The process begins by heating flat, dense stones in a fire until they reach an extremely high temperature. Slices of meat are then placed directly on the hot stone to cook. Unlike a metal grill, the stone provides a solid, continuous surface that sears the meat evenly without the risk of flare-ups from dripping fat. The stone's high thermal mass means it retains heat for a very long time, providing a consistent cooking temperature that is difficult to achieve over an open flame. This consistent, radiant heat cooks the meat quickly, developing a delicious crust while keeping the inside incredibly juicy. The stone itself can also impart a subtle, earthy flavor to the food. Our final method is not about applying heat, but about harnessing a biological process to create flavor from scratch. Meet garum, the legendary fermented fish sauce of the Roman Empire. It was the ketchup, soy sauce, and Worcestershire sauce of its day, all rolled into one, a ubiquitous condiment used on nearly every dish. Originating with the ancient Greeks, it was industrialized by the Romans, with the highest quality garum fetching prices equivalent to fine perfume. Its production process sounds shocking to modern ears. Fish, including guts, blood, and all, were layered with huge quantities of salt in large vats and left to ferment under the hot Mediterranean sun for months. But this was not rotting. It was controlled enzymatic fermentation. The salt prevented the growth of spoilage bacteria, allowing the enzymes from the fish's own digestive tract to go to work. This process, called autolysis, breaks down the fish's proteins into their component parts, amino acids, most notably glutamate. The resulting clear amber liquid was a pure, concentrated solution of umami, the savory fifth taste. Garum was a flavor bomb, capable of adding an incredible depth of savory, meaty flavor to anything it touched. This method challenges our very definition of cooking. It is a form of alchemy, transforming low-value fish parts into a shelf-stable, high-value ingredient through the masterful manipulation of biology. The Romans did not cook with heat, they cooked with thyme and enzymes, guiding a natural process away from rot and towards the creation of complex, delicious flavor. From clay pots to blazing stones, these ancient techniques open a window into a forgotten world of culinary ingenuity. They show us the container as a condiment, the elegant engineering of heat transfer, and the power of cooking beyond heat itself. These techniques aren't just historical curiosities, they are master classes in physics, chemistry, and sustainability, proof that our ancestors understood how to turn simple ingredients into meals that were extraordinary. Which of these ancient methods blew your mind the most? Would you ever dare to try cooking with hot stones or burying your dinner in ash? Let us know in the comments. This is Stella Eureka, signing off.